I craft everything. Hi everyone, my name is Tasha from I Craft Everything. And today we are going to be learning how to create acrylic tumblers with 651 vinyl. As you can see, I already have my tumbler and I've measured it length and width wise to determine how long and wide I'd like the design to appear on my tumbler. Once I do this, I go into Cricut Design Space and select the image I'd like to upload to my design. And this case is already in the library, so I'm just gonna go ahead and search for it and get it added to the canvas. As some of y'all already know, Design Space can be very slow. So I'm just gonna wait a few minutes to let this go ahead and upload my design. And if you haven't already, go ahead and tap that subscribe button, hit the bell to be notified when we drop new content, and hit the like button to show your support. We love crafting with you and you never know when we could post something that you can add to your store. Okay, so now I can see my design on the canvas and I'm gonna go up to the top where the size proportions go. I'm going to enter the length and width of the design in the measurement section and be sure to click the lock to either change them or add them. When you're finished, be sure to click the lock to close it back to make sure they don't revert to what was originally there. Once you've already done that, then you'll go in and select the elements that you'd like to be in the same colors. This does not have to be the same color as the vinyl you're selecting and you can change that anytime you like. This is simply to make sure that the parts that are going to be the same color end up on the same color mat. This will prevent some confusion for you later. Now I'm gonna click make it and send all of these elements to the mat. I don't like this particular element on the dark pink mat. I'm gonna move it to the white mat since that's where it goes. And I'm gonna go in and take the individual pieces and separate them to make sure they have enough space to cut individually. This is really important because they will have the potential to cut on top of each other if you leave them that way on the mat. So I'm just gonna run through to make sure that everything is nicely put exactly where I'd like it to go. And I'm gonna click continue and send it to the Cricut machine. And now that I've done that, I'm gonna go ahead and click the type of vinyl that I'll be using. For this particular situation, I'm using holographic threads. As you can see, those are all of my favorite materials that are on the screen. Um, for this particular one, the material that I'm using is not gonna be located on the favorite section, but I'm gonna scroll through and find it on the list. It's called holographic threads. So I'm gonna scroll down and find the one that I like. If you see one that you'd like to add to your favorites, go ahead and click the little star to add it to the front page. Oh, it looks like it's already there. So I'm just gonna make sure I select that one and we are going to start cutting. Holographic Threads has the potential to need one to two cuts. So for this particular situation, I'm going to make the pressure a little bit more so that the Cricut machine cuts the pressure a little bit heavier than it normally would. This will prevent you from having to go back and recut it. Now that all of the design has come from the machine, I'm going to go ahead and cut around the elements that have been cut by Cricut. This will get the excess material from around it so that I can go ahead and weed each individual section. With the holographic threads, it's gonna be really difficult to actually see the cut. So I like to take my fingers and feel so that I notice exactly where it's cut to make sure that I don't use my scissors and cut the wrong section. If I do, then I'll have to go back through and send it to the machine a second time. And who wanna do double work? <laughs> Not your girl.
I'm a vinyl saver, so I like to take those scraps and put them to the side. You never know when you can reuse old scraps. I have made tons of things from simply using old scraps. Now that I've cut all of my individual pieces, I'm going to start weeding. So take your weeder and pull out the excess material, leaving your pieces to the backing paper. Remember when I told you a few minutes ago about the holographic vinyl needing a heavy cut? Well, you're about to see why. As you can see, this is a little bit more challenging to come up than it would be for your normal 651 vinyl. That was supposed to cut a straight line and it did, but if you're not experienced, you're going to have to hold down the part where you can feel the cut and individually pull it up. See, it cut nice and clean. While you're weeding, be sure to take your pieces that you're gonna be putting on your cup and put them in a designated space. It's real easy to lose these individual pieces, y'all, and I don't like doing extra work. So I like to put them in a place where I know that I can find them. It's so easy to lose them and have, have to go through and recut them, and we definitely ain't doing that today.
Snap boy. I can't even see me. I hope y'all ready, here comes the fun part. We're about to start laying this vinyl on the tumbler. So as you know, the vinyl comes off of a roll in a tube by Cricut, which means it's already in a position where it doesn't lay flat. So I'm gonna take the acrylic tumbler and sit it on top and take the regular transfer tape, also known as standard grip transfer tape, and go ahead and pull it from the backing paper. So normally you go ahead and take your transfer tape and apply it to the base piece that's going on your tumbler. But for this situation, I think that headband is gonna be kind of challenging to lay once I've put the base piece on the tumbler. So I'm gonna go ahead and layer that onto the base part of the design. You can take your squeegee or you can rub your finger across it to make sure that your whole design goes onto the transfer tape. Now we're going to gently peel the backing paper from the transfer tape and the design should transition with it. As you can see, part of it's getting stuck so you can go to the other side and start the process from pulling there. Gently pull off that backing paper. And once you've gotten it off, lay that to the side take your base piece and go ahead and find the exact place on the design where that particular part should lay. Press it down either with the squeegee or with your hand when you've got it exact. But please keep in mind that once you have officially laid it down, it's hard as hell to get it up. So we're gonna go ahead and make sure that we do this right the first time so we don't ruin this and have to start over. I like to gently stick it just a little bit to see if it's in the right place. And if it is, then great. And if it's not, I'm gonna go ahead and pick it up and start from the other side, just to see if I can get it to lay perfectly. Remember when I told you that the design is a little bit uh, curved? So I'm just gonna lay that so that my design lays flat. I'm gonna sit the tumbler on top.
Okay, so you take the end and lay it exactly there. I want to make sure I get this right, y'all. <laughs> All right, it looks like it's going down perfect. Oh, yeah. So once you've got it there, you just press it. And be sure to take your squeegee or your hand and pull the uh, push down the transfer tape. This makes sure that your design is set on the tape. So when you pull it up, it automatically comes up. Go ahead and move your tumbler and get ready to pick up your design. We're gonna be laying it on the tumbler in just a second, y'all. I just wanna make sure that it's down, down because once you start to pull it up, if you don't have it all together, it will mess it up. And remember when I told y'all we ain't doing no double work? I meant that. Go ahead and gently pull it from the back of your backing paper and it should all come off together. All right, this is what it should look like. And you'll take your tumbler and lay it exactly where you want it to go. You can either lay this just as I'm doing it, or you can take some scissors and gently cut out a small slit in each side of the uh, transfer tape. This will make sure that it lays flat as you lay the design down because you don't want to have bubbles in it. Press firmly on the design to make sure it attaches to your tumbler. Don't worry about the transfer tape. That'll easily come up once your design has been pressed down successfully. As you can see, when I just pulled it up, it didn't pull successfully. So you're going to want to make sure that you keep pressing it down firmly just to make sure you got your design laid exactly where you'd like it. And start from the end and begin pulling up the transfer tape. Look at that. The design is coming along beautifully. It doesn't really matter if you ruin the transfer tape, you can always grab some more. But me, I'm a saver, so I like to make sure that my transfer tape is reusable because for this video, I use new transfer tape, but a lot of times I will just use the throwback transfer tape that I previously used. But go ahead and pull the transfer tape from the design and the design should lay flat on your tumbler. Be careful when pulling it off. You don't wanna pull it too rough because you may not have pressed down everywhere. So gently pull it and firmly hold the tumbler while you pull it. And voila, we have the base of the tumbler already complete. And now we just have to layer each individual piece and repeat that process until we're finished. Be sure that you lay each piece of vinyl exactly where you want it to go. It is okay to lay one individual piece and come back and do the second piece if they're separated like this. I just didn't want them to lay in the wrong places. So I just laid the left side first and then I went back through to add the right side. That's perfectly okay as long as you make sure it's in the symmetrical place.
because this piece that was weeded has that bubble in the middle and it's separated, it's gonna be really important that you make sure that you squeegee down the 651 vinyl. You want all of this to move as one whole piece and not two separate pieces. I mean, you can do it separately, but again, I don't like doing double work, so I'm gonna to try to get it all to move as one. Gently pull that backing paper back and it is time to lay it on the tumbler. Make sure you line it up properly, y'all. Once it's down, it's down, and we ain't doing double work over here, so let's go ahead and get it right the first time. If you're new to this, though, I just have to note that you will make mistakes, so don't worry about it. It's okay to make mistakes and start over. You can always peel this off and do it again if you want to, but if you have some residue, you can just take some alcohol and a cotton pad and get it off if you're gonna strip the vinyl from it and redo it. Yes, press it down, press it down. She is coming together nicely, ain't she? Yes. Gently pull that transfer tape back. We are almost done, y'all. Can you see the finish line? Cause I can. All we gotta do is add a few more pieces and we are finished with this tumbler. You're doing a great job. And even if you messed up, the point is you didn't give up. Keep going. That's what we are doing here. We keep going. I had to redo her eyebrow, so I had to go into Cricut Design Space and slice it. I'll save that for another video, but I'm just gonna go ahead and weed this one little eyebrow out and apply it with the transfer tape. I don't want it to go out looking crazy, y'all. So I gotta go ahead and put this eyebrow back on the right way. So just watch me work my magic to fill that in. If you miss something, you can do it too. It just depends on the situation. But for this, this point, it's just a very small, eyebrow that we missed so we can layer it on top. Watch. Hey, easy, easy, right? Press it firmly and pull it slowly. Remember, that's the motto. Press it firmly and pull it slowly. Okay, she's looking good so far. We are just about done. We only have a couple more pieces to add to this puzzle. So these little speckles are gonna give us a hard time pulling them up. It's really important that you press down and pull slowly as you weed these because it's real easy to miss a few of them. If you do, it's okay. You can go back in and recut them and just apply them the same way I just did the eyebrow. Or you can redo the whole thing if you like. But again, I don't like wasting material, y'all. So we're gonna go ahead and press them dots down just a little bit and try to get them all out the first time.
Snap boy. I can't even see me. And voila, isn't she beautiful? I really enjoy crafting with y'all. If y'all had fun too, don't forget to hit the like and subscribe button. I can't wait to craft something different with you guys next time. Thanks for stopping by.